Uh, I'm trying out a little bit of new equipment. Um, let me try a couple things real quick. Let me know if you can hear me. I'm just broadcasting from my, my cell phone. Um, hmm. Well, as you can tell by looking directly into my eyes, I have a new ring light that I'm trying out. Um, we'll see what works. Um, obviously, the, the glasses make... Yeah, oh, that's, that's good right there. Um, we'll go down just a little bit. That should be okay. Maybe a little softer light. A little blue. Ah, uh, all right. So, let me know if you can hear me. Uh, it should be good. Okay, so, uh, I have uh, my first new instrument that I've gotten in a while. And I've got it right here. And, well... Uh, I'll tell you the story of it. Over on my, my private Discord server for my... Um, yeah, other than the glasses, it looks great. Yeah, so Jared is mostly behind me getting this. Um, so Jared informed me over on uh, my, my Patreon-only Discord server um, that, you know... This, uh, this uh, instrument was for sale and basically said, yeah, if you don't buy it, I am. And it was, he posted it and within five minutes of him posting it, I had made the purchase because it was too good of a deal to pass up. Um, it is uh, going to be uh, another clarinet. So let's just go ahead and uh, open her up. Um, so first off, it is packed in... Well, just brown paper. It's not even in a box. So, technically, it's not an unboxing. But, I mean... So, if you notice me looking over to the side over here, this is where my computer is so I can see all the chat. I can't really see chat all that well on the, um, the phone. But, all right. All right, so I've got it here. And lots of bubble wrap, so bubble wrap is good. And, of course, I always need a new clarinet, because, one, I'm a terrible clarinet player. Ooh, yeah, so, um, yes, Joe, Jared, Jared knows exactly what this is. Uh, and if you can tell from the case, you can probably get a good idea of what it is, because there's only uh, one kind of clarinet that's going to come in a case like this. So this is a uh, Noble. Uh, it is an E-flat clarinet. And, um, okay, we've got it open here. So we've got a uh, little baby clarinet here. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and take her out. So I've got uh, oh, mouthpiece cap in a mouthpiece cap. So that's interesting. i got two mouthpiece caps here uh, and just a regular stock ligature. Uh, let's take a look at what the mouthpiece is. Maybe i got a good mouthpiece with it. Um, well, the, the tip is uh, pretty damaged. So, I'm going to say this is not a good mouthpiece. Uh, considering there are absolutely no markings on it, this is pretty much going to be trash. Um, I have an old reed. I have an old pull cloth. Another old reed. A third old reed. Um in old reed case and corkies uh some leblanc branded cork grease that might actually still be good who knows um 
So, uh, yeah, so let's actually take a look at the instrument. So let's look. we got a barrel here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start inspecting this for any cracks on it. And the barrel looks to be in pretty good shape. Um, I will... Actually, you know what would be fun to do? And I'll be back in just a second. Um, I didn't even think about this. I've got uh, something across the room that I'm going to go grab. So I just happen to have a uh, remarking pencil for the logo. Let's just see what happens if I can uh, refresh in this logo real quick. So um, this is just a wax pencil, wax crayon here. And for right now, I'm just gonna use uh, silver because that's what I had. I've got a gold somewhere. And I think the original was probably done in gold. Uh, this is a pretty easy process. I just go back and forth over the engraved insignia a few times, make sure I get all the wax in there. And in a second, I'm going to rub it off with a nice soft cloth. And we'll see if this is going to look uh, pretty nice. Just happen to have a nice, good instrument cleaning cloth here. And boom. So you can see uh, it cleans up pretty nicely. Uh, let's uh, take a polishing cloth to it real quick, just on those rings, and see if I can get it looking almost as good as new. quite but uh yeah so there's uh the the barrel on it so it looks uh pretty good i will probably do a nice oil soak on this see um if it'll take a little bit of oil but uh yeah so barrel looks like it's in good shape let's take a look at the uh bell next so first thing we're going to inspect for any cracks and the bell looks like it's in good shape as well so we'll clean it up. Uh, should I go ahead and uh, do the um, insignia? Why not? I've got it here. I've got people watching. You're not bored by this yet. So let's go ahead and uh, clean up that insignia on here. I always like doing this. It makes it feel like the instrument's starting to come back to life. It's a minor little detail, but it it does make the instrument feel like it's, uh, you know, it's living and breathing again. To, to have its name put back on it. And just rub that down with our soft cloth here. And lo and behold, there we go. Noble Paris. So that looks pretty nice on there. And the bell looks like it's in really good condition. Uh, I see no, no cracks, no dings, nothing on it that... Uh, Shows any sign of major damage. Yeah. Good little bar uh, barrel and bell there. At some point, I'm sure that I will um, upgrade the barrel and the bell. Okay. Now, the body. 
This is where, in some of the pictures I saw, there was hints of a crack um, in it um, going through the trill keys. But as I look at it, what I was seeing in the pictures was the wood grain. And this is a beautiful piece of grenadilla wood. And um, it does not appear to have a single crack in it whatsoever, which means this is a really, really good instrument for the price I paid for it. Oh, I didn't tell you how much I paid for it because some of you are really going to hate me for this, but... Uh, $64. That's it. That's uh, why I had to jump on it so quickly. Um, because at $64, it is an absolute steal of a deal. Um, I don't think the seller knew it was an E flat. Uh, you know, a regular B flat noble, eh, there's, those are out there. But an E flat, you, you see it as a clarinet, um, you know, the seller was not a, a music seller. So, uh, yeah. So, for $64 and then like $4 and something, $5 something for shipping, total, I'm under 70 bucks on this instrument. Uh, I have a looks to be in really phenomenal shape. It's going to need all new pads. Of course, it's going to need a new tenon cork up here. Uh, that's no biggie. I can do that. I can put new pads on. I've repadded clarinets before. That's easy. Let's take a look down the bore here. Man, the ring light makes this so easy. Um, but yeah, so it, it, it feels really... Um, um, good in the hand. Up oh, there's a pad that's come out, but again, all the pads are going to come out, and I'm going to redo everything on here. Um, all the pads, all probably all the corks. I'll probably put this in an oil bath and just kind of let the wood really soak in. Um, oh, let's see what happens if I clean up this um, insignia here. Bring everything back to life. What I love is actually this old font that Noble used for their insignia. It really feels like um, it's it's a very mid-century font. I mean, it is absolutely something I would have expect a kind of font I would expect to see in. An old Disney cartoon. That's actually what it reminds me of. Um, there's just something very, very nostalgic about it. Like 1940s. It, there's... It, I mean, I don't think this is 1940s. It may... Uh, we can check. Um... Hey, Jared, if you're there and uh, able to access it, do you think you could um, look at serial numbers for me and see if we can find out exactly when this was made? Let's see if I can find a serial number on here. Yeah, there it is. Let's see. And I'm not sure if there is an online uh, database for serial numbers for no blaze. Um, I'm sure there is. So we've we're looking at um, it's a thirty-four thousand range. So I'll just um, leave it at that, so we don't give away the full serial number on it. But it's a uh, yeah, it's thirty-four thousand. 
But uh, so yeah, I put the uh, the redid such the logo on the body. Looks uh, not quite brand new, but I mean, looks pretty good to have that on there. And then yeah, so next step will be you know stripping it down, polishing up all the keys, and. Uh, see both logos on there now so you can kind of see that nice and cleaned up but so Noble, if you don't know was kind of leblanc's intermediate line um so full clarinet all put together uh, uh of course it's not going to play because there's no cork here so i won't get much of a sound um they were actually really, really good instruments when they were being made. Um, um, really, some, some there you can get some really good playing instruments out of the Noble line. My alto clarinet is a Noble. I love it. I, in fact, I actually played it at a gig yesterday. Uh, Christmas time is great for alto clarinet gigs. Uh, so I'm hoping that the E flat will play. Uh, just as well as the alto does. Um, what I've been using for an E-flat is this. This is a, a Chinese E-flat. Um, I'm wondering just how different in design the Chinese E-flat is from the Noble. And the first thing I noticed different is, we'll take a look at... The trill keys here, let's see if I can get it. I'm looking at everything backwards. So, is that right? No, there. All right, so on the trill keys, uh, the noble, which is in my right hand, um, has uh, posts for all the keys. All the keys are on individual posts. On the, the Chinese E flat, uh, the top two trill keys share posts. Uh, which means that the noble is going to have a better action on those notes. Um, the noble keys are sculpted a little more. The Chinese are a little more flat. Um, interestingly, the position on the pinky keys does seem to be a little bit different. Um... Yeah, there's just some, some minor differences. You can definitely tell that the Chinese instrument was not modeled on the uh, Noble. The, the pinky keys here are wonderfully positioned, whereas on this one, uh, I don't like the position of the Chinese E-flat as much. They, it feels awkward, like they were made for really small hands. But for my hands, the uh, Noble sits really, really beautifully. I don't have to stretch for the, the keys. And they, they fit really nicely under the hand. Um, but yeah, so I, I think this is going to be a really, really nice instrument once I get it all fixed up. Maybe I can get it working before Christmas. Who am I kidding? I have no time. Um, I will, if I get this finished before spring break and playing, that'll be a miracle. Um, but yeah, so for all of, uh, just under $70, I have a brand new E flat clarinet. I mean, hell, the ring glide I'm using <laughs> was a good chunk of, uh, fraction of what I paid for the E flat. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm. Uh, really going to be happy about that, and hopefully it's going to be a really good player once I get it all fixed up. I am very pleased that there are no cracks in it. I I had a worry that there would be, uh, but it sh just shows that what it is is that there is a lot of variation in color in the wood on this instrument. So this uh, instrument has, it's a really, it's a beautiful looking grenadilla wood on it. Um, but, uh, yeah, so new E flat clarinet. If anybody has any questions, go ahead and ask now. Um, 
Uh, I guess I could probably update some of the other projects. Symphony 3 is slowly starting to come together. We uh, have some players who have fully submitted all their tracks. Uh, a couple of players have done that already. Uh, a couple more are near there. And then it is just going to be long haul. Uh, I do expect the full performance to be done in, sometime early 2023. So I'll be working on it all next year. I don't expect it to be done anytime next year. I, I could be surprised by that, but uh, I've got to finish another project before I can finish Symphony 3. Namely, that is uh, the the Great Bassoon, because i got to play this thing. And I have been doing minor design tweaks, uh, trying to do a minor design tweak every day to send over to Jared so he can model it, so we can get a final, final version of it. Um, I had a nice long conversation with my, my vocal maker uh, a couple nights ago, and we've got uh, some ideas on prototypes for vocals, and he says hopefully we can get vocals made by March, and we're going to make a whole bunch of them and try out some various uh, different uh, configurations on those, and fingers crossed it all goes good on there, but... Uh, that's kind of the status on that. So again, if anybody has any questions, let me know. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to sign off. I'm going to go grab some dinner and take a nap, then go to bed. Uh, but yeah. So I'll hang around for another couple minutes or so. Uh, God, I've got a lot of clarinets on this table. One, two, three, four, five clarinets and a soprano sax and like half of a great bassoon. Uh, this table I use to clean up stuff is uh, turning into a mess itself. Yeah, I'm good about getting stuff clean. Um, anyway, so yeah, I will sign off for the night. Um, I uh, will uh, talk to you guys later on that. So thanks for watching, guys, and hopefully I'll have a good working E-flat clarinet soon.